Everybody, if you like this video, please hit that subscribe button. And I think there's a there's a bell there too. Ring that for more YouTube content. Oh, what the f If you have any Boo Boo Bennett met up with Marjorie Taylor Greene. Oh my god, two of my queens. This is too good to not look at. Holy shit. Advice to Christians, conservatives, Trump supporters to speak up. What would you say to them? I would say that we are possibly living in the last days of having free speech. And if anyone values that, and if you're a Christian uh, who has been saved by my Savior, their Savior, your Savior, Jesus Christ, if you believe in God, you better stop being complacent and you better stop being quiet. Uh, we, we are given this grace and we're not meant to keep it covered. We're not meant to uh, keep a lid on our light. We're, we're meant to expose it to the world and we are supposed to be brave. You're awesome. You're a fighter. You're so strong. A lot of people like to say you're my mom. So that's okay with I'll me. I'll take that. You're a very good, solid <laughs> Two woman lits. Conservative, gun loving, Second Amendment supporting young lady. So that's you heard it here. Marjorie is my mom. So, okay. Ever since you won your election back in Georgia, the media has just loved to attack you. And it seems as if because they don't have Trump to go after, you are their new target. How do you handle it so well? Well, the, the way I handle it is I didn't run for the media. I ran for the people. And my saying during my campaign, and I continue to say it, is people over politicians. As a matter of fact, that's so important to me. Um, we have that on my... Being a salt of the earth, real uh, layman, loving politician for conservatives is like how many psychopathic, racist, anti-Semitic conspiracies can you fit into one speech? Because like this person's background is not... She's like a she's like a real estate developer, a CrossFit mom who cheated on her husband. Like her real life uh, bona fides do not imply that she is a she is like a regular old you know salt of the earth uh, everyday average Joe or Jane I guess. <laughs> Literally American Taliban's. Oh, of course. My wall uh, in my office in Washington D.C. and I can't wait for Nancy Pelosi to stop running our capital like it's some kind of military state and we get that border wall taken down. I can't wait for the taxpayers and my constituents to come in and, and see me in my office so they can see how much they mean to me. Um, but the media, we we know exactly who they are. We saw it with President Trump over over the past four years. The most of the mainstream media is Democrats. Um, they they want they support Democrats. They want these progressive policies in place and they use their powerful platform to push these policies. And so, wow, you know what? I've tuned it out. I can't even, oh God, she's not saying anything fun or interesting or new right now. Say, I need to just spice it up. I couldn't even pay attention to her, you know? When someone who's conservative like me uh, and, and I truly love America and my policies are America first, just like President Trump, and I support him completely and I can't wait for him to speak tomorrow. Um, they they want to tear me down and smear me and create a narrative that they can sell to the public. And how I handle it is that's not who I am. And all of my family and friends are constantly appalled at their attacks and so are my constituents. And so here's the great news. You don't worry about bullies. You don't let them bully you and you don't you don't worry about their lies and you keep putting yeah marjorie taylor green is the anti-bully candidate who uh recently very famously plastered uh, there's only two genders uh man and woman on the uh congress halls next to a uh, representative who's uh who has a trans uh child that's you know, I, I hate bullying. Great. Uh, also, she hates bullying. That's why she harassed uh, a victim of a school shooting who became a political activist, uh, David Hogg. You know, that's like, that's just stuff that you do when you're not a bully or uh, shoot up fucking uh, cans of uh, Tenorite with the sign socialism in front of it. One foot in front of the other and doing the right thing because it's not about the media in this country. It's about the people. I, my story is kind of similar to yours because right now I get chased out of college campuses. They don't want me in these public spaces. They chased you. Dude, I love that. I love that. I love that conservatism is basically creating opportunities for you to be permanently owned over and over again by people who abhor you because of the reprehensible behavior that you demonstrate and then turning it into your political ideology that like everyone hates you and somehow we should fix the system. It's great. Why does everyone hate that I am uncontrollably pissing, shitting, and farting every time I'm around other human beings? Why does everyone keep saying, please stop pissing, shitting, and farting on me? 
every time I try to do that around them. Please, we need to game the system so that I can piss shit and fart directly on top of people without them getting upset at me. And voted you out of your committee. And I know in your press statements you say, well, now I have more time to focus on the people back in Georgia. Are you still of that mindset? Are you regretting that you aren't on that committee at all? Are you still happy with who you are and where you're going? Oh, listen, that was a that was a great big gift yeah. from from the Democrats and 11 of my very weak Republican colleagues. Uh, it was 10 that voted again for impeachment on Trump. It was 11 that voted to kick me off. And most of those people have been censured in their own districts and states. So I think they're hearing from people uh, exactly the message they need to hear. No, being being removed from committees right now was the best thing that could have happened to me because the Democrats are running Congress. They do not care about the Republicans' voices, Republicans' ideas, Republican amendments, Republican policies on these committees. And so by removing me from committees, I have been freed up of having to listen to their woke again yet another demonstration of the i'm not owned i'm not owned these l's that i've been served they're actually not a bad thing and a good thing instead now i have so much free time to do what exactly like uh, i i have lost the modicum of power that the rest of the republican caucus uh, afforded me for some weird reason i do not know why by the way i guess maybe because they're fucking insane but now I, I just have all this free time so I can, you know, shit post on Twitter. It's great. Progressive, ridiculous, socialist, Democrat ideas for hours on, on Zoom meetings where they actually sit and wear a mask on the Zoom meeting. Um, so I'm freed up to go be back at home, serving my constituents, having town halls, talking with people at home and hearing their ideas. And then I'm also uh, running things on the House floor, which has been a lot of fun, uh, calling to adjourn when and trying to give Democrats some more time before they they vote for horrible things like the Equality Act. Uh, so there's a lot of things. That Mask on a Zoom meeting is silly, not gonna lie. Why would you ever take anything she just said seriously? Like, why would you ever believe anything she said? She followed that up with, it's given me more time to not listen to socialist Democrat policies. Like, she's probably lying that I can do, and I'm so excited to have great relationships with many of my Republican colleagues because they go and, and support my ideas on, on committees. So I, I say I'm... Uh, yeah, my ideas, like the Inequality Act, which is uh, an act that I'm going to put forward, you know, separate but uh, equal, I think is a good policy. I don't know why we can't go back to it, you know. Um, they're calling it segregation. I call it uh, I see no color, except for the legislation that I'm writing which will separate black people from whites again uh, because equality is bad a chairwoman of the committee of the whole and um I, i'm having a great time well that brings me to my next question the establishment gop they hate you they hate you why are they so threatened by your existence well the the establishment so we t and we can say the swamp right so it's the political pundits it's the beltway it's uh the, the consultants that, that deem themselves so much more intelligent and, and wise, uh, and they know better than the people, right? Well, their problem is, is they've been living in a little bubble, a political bubble, where they've only been looking at themselves and talking to each other. They are so clueless about what real people think, what real people want, and how real people feel. They have to constantly poll to find out what people really think. Um, but they're so disconnected. And these are the ones that are ruining the Republican Party. These are the same people that under the first two years under President Trump failed America. They failed our president and they failed the people that voted for him and voted for Republicans. And that's why Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats won in uh, 2018. And so, um, you know, what I have to say to those establishment Republicans is, you're not representing the people that are voting Republican, and they're losing their people's support. And so that's why they're getting censured. That's why everybody hates Adam Kinzinger. That's why everybody's fed up with Liz Cheney, and nobody cares what, about those type of Republicans. They're, it's old. I mean, fuck those Republicans, okay? I mean, they suck. The reality is they are the same as Marjorie Taylor Greene. They are still Republicans. They're still bad across the board. Most Democrats are too, let's be real. But the the hilarity is like, yeah, the American people are fed up with the Liz Cheney style uh, Republicans, which is why they want me, uh, a Republican uh, who is going to spend her time trying to unsuccessfully impeach Joseph Robinette Biden for uh, being a agent of the Chinese Communist Party. And she is kind of right. 
right? That is what the Republican hogs that are many, by the way, the actual Republican voter base wants people like her. And that's the best kind of action that they can take because the actual Republican base doesn't really care all that much about uh, whether the $15 minimum wage is going to uh, impact them in a positive or negative way. As a matter of fact, some of them recognize that it could impact them in a positive way. We're done with them. It's like, let's move on. So it's President Trump's party and America first. Absolutely. (laughs) One of the things that you wear on your mask when you do have to wear one is... I've got this one today. This is my (laughs) impeach Biden. Uh, Bro, she loves dressing up, dude. Every mask that she has. The funny thing is like everyone hates AOC, right? Like all of the Republicans hate AOC, but like they all secretly are like, I wish I could have my AOC moment. You know, I'm going to do this thing where I just wear like different kind of masks. I love accessorizing. So I'm going to do this different kind of thing where I wear all these like crazy masks. It says I'm censored and whatever. We'll trigger the libtards, you know, and uh, eventually I'll, I'll get, uh, you know, a Fox News slot and, and all the love and affection from the rest of the National Republican Party. But you were one that says she's dead ass. Oh, my God. She dead ass looks like a Titan straight up. She does. She literally looks like a fucking Titan. Oh, my God. Proof for those of you who aren't uh, pathetic weebs. I think it's the dead eyes. What is this? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, that's yikes. But you were one that says end abortion. Yes. What does ending abortion specifically, ending abortion, mean to you? Where, where do we go with it? We completely end abortion. It's the worst evil uh, committed in our day. It, uh, you know, Roe versus... Yeah, it, it's the worst evil committed in our day is, is abortion. <laughs> Dude, there's no way she believes this. I'm sorry. You need to get hit in the head too many times to actually genuinely believe this. And the number of hits that it would take for you to actually genuinely believe this means you're already dead. You're a vegetable, okay? There's no fucking way. The amount of times that you need to be concussed in order to legitimately defend this position as it's your genuine opinion implies that you have died already. Okay, there's no way. Or just be super sheltered. No, 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 no. No super sheltered person. Like people think abortion is murder, right? But to say that it's the greatest evil committed in our day, to hold that as a genuine position, there's no way. I don't believe that. This way it happened in 1973. I was born in 1974. Um, So my entire life, your entire life. Also, she's a QAnon supporter. So what I don't understand is like, if you're QAnon, but you believe the uh, abortion is the greatest evil committed, then are you saying that like a deep state pedophile ring executed by the Democratic Party and also the intelligence community and every single Republican that's a fake rhino Republican that hates Donald Trump? Uh, literally trafficking children and fucking them uh, by utilizing Wayfair and other dropshipping websites and shit to sell one another little babies is actually comparatively not as bad as like abortion. This is what I'm saying. Like if you if you ask a couple questions and dive into their worldview, it, it like literally doesn't make sense within the worldview that they've created, no matter how psychotic it is. Uh, babies are murdered every single day in the womb, and that's that's a horrific evil. And and our government even even finds ways for taxpayer dollars to pay for it. That's what they did with the the 1.9 trillion dollar budget last night. One of the amendments I was able to introduce on the rules committee. See, they kicked me off, but guess what? I was on the rules committee yesterday. Um, I introduced an amendment to stop all federal funding of that bill. Uh, to go towards abortion. Uh, Democrats rejected it, of course, because they reject everybody's, any Republicans amendment. Um, But yeah, no, we need to end it. We need to end it. Over 62 million people have been murdered. They've been canceled. And they want to cancel innocent lives in the womb. They want to cancel gender, male. Dude, dude. Everything is cancel culture, dude. Everything is cancel culture. Abortions? Cancellation of innocent lives in the womb. Just say murder, dumbass. Cancellation is like less aggressive than fucking murder. Just keep going with the murder element. Why do you have to say it's cancel culture? You're canceling, you're canceling a fetus. Oh God, when you're so dumb that like you, you turn your manufactured grievance into a, and you use less aggravating language to describe your manufactured grievance. It is so funny. Male and female, they want to cancel uh, conservative Americans that believe in those very real fundamental things of life. And so ending abortion means ending it completely. Every life has a chance. So it's not regulating it. It's not heartbeat bills. It's abolishing it. Abolish abortion. End it completely. Stop it. Stop it. Get some help. There's just, there aren't words for it. I'm so glad to hear you say that. Okay, the last question, because I don't want to take up any more of your time. 
Speaking of labels, and they love to call you a conspiracy theorist, all of this, yeah. all of the garbage, right? right? Even though they believe in the Russia collusion. That's a big conspiracy theory, isn't it? Uh, yep. Yeah. Okay. A lot of conservatives are having trouble keeping their jobs. We talked about being canceled and keeping their social media. They're getting banned everywhere, like President Trump. There's a lot of people who, like me and you, are feeling scared to speak up. If you have any advice to Christians, conservatives, Trump supporters to speak up, what would you say to them? I would say that we are possibly living in the last days of having free speech. And if anyone values that, and if you're a Christian uh, who has been saved by my Savior, their Savior, your Savior, Jesus Christ, if you believe in God, you better stop being complacent and you better stop being quiet. Uh, we, we are given this grace and we're not meant to keep it covered. We're not meant to uh, keep a lid on our light. We're, we're meant to expose it to the world and we are supposed to be brave. And if you are speaking the truth in this world, you're going to be attacked and, and that's okay because it's not this world that we live for, it's, it's the next one. And um, so what I say to everyone is whether, whether you're a religious person or, or whether you're not one, you have a great gift that most people on this planet don't have, and that is the freedom of speech. So use it, use it, and don't ever forget that people like me that have been elected, everyone that works in government, everyone that serves in government, works for the people. It's, it's a customer service relationship. See, that's something I understand as a business owner. Uh, I have to serve my customers and their tax dollars pay for my paycheck. They pay for everything to do with government and the American people need to remember that. Uh, so, you know, it's hold people accountable. Tell them exactly what you have to say, feel, think, and hear, and never stop. Don't get discouraged. Uh, don't get bullied by the media. Don't get bullied by big tech. Who cares about Mark Zuckerberg and uh, you know Google and all these people? It's not about them. It's about the American people, and the people matter. So people over politicians. I just keep saying it. On behalf of my audience, I just want to say so many people love you, Marjorie, because you were real. It's so sad. It's so fucking sad. You are a real American. You're not an elitist out there. And I just want to say on behalf of them, we love you. We truly do. You represent us. Just like we see Donald Trump, that's what we see. We see ourselves in you and Donald Trump, and that's why we love you so much. So can I hug you? <laughs> You're awesome. Thank you so much. For having me. Thank you. As you guys notice, I got a... Uh... Bro, she literally loves her. That's so weird. Okay, what is this? I, what is this tweet that I see people... All right, guys, so I just got home right now from picking up my little niece, and I hit a pole. I called my husband. I told him that he needs to come home, so he's on his way home right now, so wish me luck, y'all. And he's here, guys. 